Hey guys and welcome to Howdy Gastro. In today's video we're going to be talking about a very interesting topic and that is the scalp ringworm. So let's get started. So what is the scalp ringworm? The scalp ringworm, which is also commonly known as tinea capitis, is a fungal infection of the scalp and the hair shafts. The ringworm of the scalp is not really caused by a worm, but gets the name ringworm because the fungus actually makes circular, itchy, scaly and bald patches on the head. The disease is primarily caused by fungal dermatophytes, more specifically the trichophyton species and the microsporum species. So from this definition of the scalp ringworm, we get that it's also commonly known as tinea capitis and is actually a fungal infection of the scalp and the hair shafts. So if we take a close look at this image here at the bottom of my screen, we see what this fungal infiltration of the scalp and the hair shafts looks like. So the disease is actually called the scalp ringworm, but it's not actually caused by a worm. It's caused by two main specific types of fungi, which are called trichophyton and microsporum. As we can see here, these are the microscopic images of them. And it's called ringworm because it causes this circular ring-like formation of infection in these patients, which sort of resembles a ring, hence the name the scalp ringworm. So now that we know what the basics of the scalp ringworm is, let's take a closer look at how one can contract this disease. So the disease is actually highly infectious and can be easily transmitted by humans, animals or objects that harbor the fungus. So the tinea capitis fungi can easily be passed from one person to another by direct skin contact or by contaminated objects such as unwashed clothing, hats, headscarves or even combs. So something very interesting about this disease is that dogs and cats can also have the fungus and may actually spread the infection to a human as well. And another important point to note is that the scalp ringworm infection occurs more often during the warm weather months. So as this little speech bubble explains, the disease is actually highly infectious and is easily transmitted not only from human to human, but from certain animals such as cats and dogs to humans. And of course, those contaminated objects such as unwashed towels or hats or headscarves or even combs. So this is actually an example of a case of two sisters who were sharing a head comb and as we can see here, this was one sister's head with a tinea capitis infection. And then this is what the other sister's head looked like. And similarly, in cats and dogs, the actual appearance or the manifestation of the disease is very similar. We will have the appearance of these circular hairless spots on the coat or the fur of these animals as well. And these are the various ways in which one can actually get the scalp ringworm. So moving on, let's explore some signs and symptoms. So the symptoms include a round, red and scaly rash that may be very itchy. The rash usually begins 4 to 10 days after coming into contact with the fungus and starts as a small pumper-like bump. This raised area expands, forming an increasingly larger circle. And the circle often has a central area that becomes more normal looking or healthier and a slightly raised reddish border that looks like a ring. So if we take a closer look at this picture, we see that slightly raised outer border which is actually very red in color and that resembles the ring and then we have the area in the middle of the scalp although it's red it looks more normal so the hair at the site of the infection may become brittle and break off easily and therefore the area may end up with hairless patches as we can see in these various children from around the world this is what the typical manifestation of this infection looks like so we have this rash which is very scaly it's very itchy it's red and it's got this typical roundish aspect the diagnosis of the scalp ringworm. So the doctor can often make a clinical diagnosis of the scalp ringworm based on a visual examination of the scalp on the presentation of the patient. If the diagnosis requires a laboratory confirmation, then samples of the hair will be taken for examination under a microscope. The microscopic examination will reveal the presence of the trichophyton or microsporum species of fungi and help to confirm the diagnosis. So usually it's very easy to put a clinical diagnosis of the infection based on the classic presentation of the rash. But in some cases, the diagnosis can be tricky. So in these cases, we can actually take samples of these hair, send them off to a lab and actually look for the presence of the specific trichophyton or microsporum species of fungi from these little hair shafts. And finally, let's talk about the treatment of the scalp ringworm. So antifungal medications that can be taken by mouth are used to treat the ringworm of the scalp. 
The medications most commonly prescribed include Grisofulvan and Terbinafine. The recommended pediatric dosage for Grisofulvan is 10 mg per kilogram per day for 6 to 8 weeks and 5 mg per kilo per day of Terbinafine for 2 to 4 weeks. And that brings us to the end of this video on tinea capitis or ringworm of the scalp. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you found the presentation very interesting and informative. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe and share. And please make sure to turn on your bell notifications so you'll be notified every time we have a new upload. If you'd like to download a copy of this presentation, you may do so by clicking the link in the description. Take care and bye for now.